Como te va, turtles? It's Crick here with Black Outdoors. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Lem Shoes Leather Boulder Boots, which are minimalist. Stay tuned. So we haven't done a lot of footwear reviews on the channel, and I'm not really sure why, because they're really important. But with that being said, let me grab one of the boots and we're gonna start talking about probably one of my favorite pairs of footwear. So here's the boot, and this is from Lem Shoes, like I mentioned before, and this is the all leather version of the Boulder boot, which is going for $140, this is US. We've already done a video on their original Boulder boots, which we're both a huge fan of, and I was really excited to get these, and I probably had them for almost six months now, wearing them almost every day. These are the dark brown laces. There also comes a pair that almost look like construction boots. They remind me of the laces you would have seen in construction boots when I was growing up a lot. Um, but I like these, uh, these brown laces much better. I'm just gonna spin the boot around a little bit just to give you an idea of the construction. And these are minimalist shoes, meaning there's really no arch in these. It's a zero drop. I have flat feet, so I'm not looking for shoes with arch support anyways. But this is a leather boot, and look at that flex. And I have worn some other minimalist type of shoes, and while these limbs have more than them, they have padding, but there's not so much cushioning that you feel like you're not really having contact with the ground with your feet. So in my mind, it's a pretty good price starter minimalist type shoe uh, to work up with the muscles that are needed to wear a shoe like this, especially if you're gonna be wearing it on like pavement or concrete where there's really no give at all. And on the inside, it has the same cotton lining as the original Boulder boots. And the cotton lining, I'm still on the fence of for a shoe that might be you know, designed solely for the outdoors, or not solely, but something more for the outdoors because if this would get wet in the humid climate, the humid summers of Pennsylvania, excuse me, they're gonna take a long time to dry this cotton lining. Maybe a synthetic might work better. Just a suggestion, I don't know. Take a look at the bottom of the boot now. A couple things I wanna to touch on, but let's just focus on the tread right now. You can see the pattern. It's a, I'll call it a casual style of tread. I mean, there's not really a lot of big lugs, but you wouldn't expect large lugs on a minimalist style boot. That's really nothing, that's really not what you want, honestly, or can probably even achieve and still call it minimalist. So you do have to be careful if you're walking on really wet rocks or wet logs without bark on them in my part of the world, where I notice I need to be more conscious of where I'm putting my feet and my balance. But honestly, that just involves you, you know, having your balance on point and being able to walk on less than ideal terrain. There's one more thing I want to talk about while I have the boot upside down, and that's a transition from sort of the narrower part of our foot to how much wider it gets up here in the toe box. And it's a reason why I would definitely purchase other shoes from this company knowing it's going to have a wide toe box because most of my life I've been wearing very narrow shoes and it's almost deformed my feet where my pinky toe is getting squished. So about four or five years ago I made the conscious decision decision to adopt a four foot running style when I used to run a lot and while also getting wider toe boxes in my shoes so my toes have room to spread out as I'm moving and it's actually pretty amazing how much um, dexterity I have now in my outer toes like my pinky and the one next to that was that your ring toe maybe <laughs> uh, because I've made the decision to wear wider shoes so it's great. That's why I love minimum style shoes because just in general, they're gonna probably have a wider toe box. The last thing I really wanna talk about is the leather component of this boot. So starting off, I started wearing these in early January, I believe, and it was cold. And I've been wearing them pretty much up until now because we've had a really nice spring, but these are definitely not going to be a summer shoe for me in my part of the world just because our summers are usually hot and humid and this isn't going to breathe as well as the original boulder boots. 
Now with that being said, on a concrete floor in the garage where I've been doing work in the winter, this leather has kept my feet really warm. Even considering there's really not too much in between my foot, you know, in the bottom here, looking at thickness wise as a maybe another boot would with a big old heel on it. And, you know, I'm not riding a horse every day, so I'm not worrying about <laughs> clicking my feet into stirrups. But even all that being considered with my foot sitting pretty uh, flat and close to cold concrete, it did a really great job of insulating my foot. And for leather care, maybe about once a month, I've been putting a, uh, probably a light coat of Ovenoffs Heavy Duty LP. We've done a video on that product before. And you can see really where the boot's gonna wear more. You know, right around where the foot flexes, you have these wrinkles. It's really important to make sure you get your, your treatment oils or whatever you use, get down in there. You know, even on the inside here, again, where the foot's gonna flex a lot when you're walking. Make sure these areas are treated the best because that's what's really gonna get the most wear out of a boot. And then in the back, you're gonna have some again, because I don't tie my boots that often, especially these ones. So they kind of sit here and just making sure, like I said, these wrinkles and high use areas get the most oil. But like I said, about once a month with wearing them every day, just a light, light coat really is all they need. And you know, the leather's done, done a really great job. I haven't put any extra like waterproofing on this. You could, you could hit it with a spray if you're really concerned about making these as waterproof as possible. Sorry, a big old shadow just went right behind Stony. I don't know if it was a vulture or something, but. But yeah, it's really all you need, you know, just maybe once a month of some light maintenance. And, you know, these boots are looking really great, like I said, for six months. And in my mind, there's only one thing that would make this style of boot that much better. Is that if, now I know the price will probably change with that, but if the sole was replaceable or repairable, meaning it was stitched to the boot, not just glued. For $140, I think these boots are kind of priced right where they should be. And that's not cheap. I don't want you to think that's a cheap um, price for a pair of shoes. But I think with the leather and everything else, it's right where it needs to be. But like I said, I would love a sole that was stitched so that if this separates or the treads wear out, you know, the uppers will probably last for years and years. It's the sole that wears out first. So if you have any brands that you think that might do that, Usually you're going to be looking at custom boots, but if you know of any, please let me know. Drop me a line, drop me a comment. That would be great job. Great job. Great job. That's pretty much all I have to say about these Boulder boots from Lem Shoes. I'd like to thank Lem's again for sending us two pairs to try out and share our experiences with you. So until the next video, this is Crick. Yep, still Crick with Black Owl. Peace out, turtles.